Happy Sunday. I'm Dustin. It's 7.30 in the morning. Do you know where your coffee is? I do. Yes. Welcome, John Guggenhan. So glad that you're here joining me bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this morning. Let's go. Mm. I want to talk a little bit about this morning about my coffee. So what goes into my coffee? I don't know if it's of any interest to any of you whatsoever, but we have an espresso machine, as we've talked about before. And in my coffee, I use uh, four espresso pods. I do have some instant espresso that I'll toss a teaspoon in there. And as of late, I've been putting in about a teaspoon of Hershey's Special Dark Unsweetened Cocoa Powder into my coffee, mixing it up. Uh, it just adds a little something extra. It's like, mm, just a little something extra, you know? Ham Smith is in the house. Oh, so glad you all are joining me today. What do you want to talk about? Mm. As Adam the Woo would say, one of my favorite YouTubers would say, I got my piping hot caffeinated beverage right here. John says he's getting ready to make four eggs over easy and some pork jowl bacon. I haven't had pork jowl bacon in a long time. When we were shopping Kroger a lot, they have a lot of pork jowl bacon, but we just haven't been shopping at Kroger, so it's kind of one of those out of sight, out of mind things. I need to go and buy some. Sounds delicious. I've been kind of on uh, sausage patties, you know, like the breakfast sausage patties. I kind of go through phases where those just sound amazing, and I just ate a 30-pack of those over the last week. So I need to go and re-up on uh, that box. Pam, you have chocolate in your coffee too. Also coconut oil. Uh, <clears throat> I've been lowering the amount of fat that I've been putting in my coffee. For a while, I was putting in like a half a stick of butter for a while. just to... And just probably not the best idea. It tastes delicious. I do put some heavy cream. So heavy cream, espresso, and uh, the special dark. Teresa's in the house. Good morning. Coffee, coffee. Everybody's got your coffee. I don't think you could be up before the sun. Well, at least the sun was coming up as I was making my coffee before I hopped in the shower to come and hang out with all of y'all. So fresh and so clean. Sparkly Susan is in the house. Food prepping and enjoying the time. Oh, so amazing. I need to make some more videos today. <clears throat> so Interesting, yesterday was uh, the first day that I've ever gone out and door dashed. I went door dashed for about two hours yesterday um, and went into places that I haven't been into in forever. Went into KFC, uh, McDonald's. I went into a, a restaurant in our town that I've never been into before. It's a Mexican restaurant. I tell you what, the drive with that package in the car smelled amazing. Like the sour cream, mm, could smell it. And I went to Dairy Queen twice. That's almost like before I started keto, going to Dairy Queen twice in one day. Now, <clears throat> one of the interesting things that I saw while I was inside McDonald's picking up an order was they have, uh, so I mean, I'm in Indiana, Indianapolis, we have the Colts, and they have a Colts pack at McDonald's, at least our local McDonald's. I imagine every McDonald's probably has something similar for whatever your regional sports team is, and it was two Big Macs. I think it was two orders of fries and a 20 piece nugget. I just, it just kind of flashed across the screen quick. I didn't really get a chance to see it all that well, but I was thinking to myself, that's supposed to be for two people back before keto. That would have been for me and probably something else. I probably would have ordered extra stuff. I don't know about all of y'all, but that was just, you know, one of those things, you know, that the, you know, the joys of food addiction, right? Let's see what we've got here. Susan's in the house. Susan B16. I'm baking keto treat balls, too many loaves of low carb bread, and baking bacon too. Wow. I put all of our bacon in the freezer because we just kind of got on one of those kicks where we weren't eating bacon and I didn't want it to go bad. So we'll be on um, 
the cycle where we're eating like two pounds of bacon a day and then we'll go through where we don't eat it for a couple of weeks. Um, right now is one of those cycles when we're not eating it very often. Nut pods in your coffee, the cake creamer. I'm not a big fan of sweet in my coffee. I've tried so many different creamers, um, you know, as you know, we're affiliates with a couple of different companies and they will send us sweet coffee creamers, you know, with stevia or whatever their sweetener of choice is. And they're just, they taste okay, but there's something about coffee, my coffee being sweet that I'm just not a fan of. Um, so just, just special dark cocoa works just so well for me. So she spot nut pads for the first time yesterday. It's so, so terrible. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. We had something. So we have our granddaughter five days a week, and she drinks milk. Uh, she has a cup of milk a day usually. Um, I'll have to check those out. I don't know if, if I'll like them or not, but I will take a look at them if, if they're not sweet. That's good to know. Uh, but something had like i don't know what it was but like the milk was just curdled like it was like not even if you know it was supposedly good through the 12th and this was like lot you know thursday or friday and it was bad in the carton so i don't know i just forget about milk because i don't drink it i did buy a, a, a container of the fair life but i haven't tried it yet it's like half the carbs of regular milk but i don't know if that's a slippery slope for me because i used to drink huge like about half gallons of milk at a time back in the day so I don't know if that's something that I should probably stay away from or, you know, or if it could be, you know, a decent addition every once in a while if I just want that milk flavor or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I if uh, so our local Walmart carries the nut pods, but I haven't got a chance to really look at them yet to see if. They are sweet or unsweet. Oh, I find a lot of times that the sweetened ones are all I can find typically. Um, so, but I'll take a look next time at Walmart. I'll have to go sometime this week to get kitty litter and stuff. So, you know. So, how was everybody's week? Fair life milk is good. Okay. <clears throat> My week was pretty good. Uh, last Monday, Shander and I, we went to Ohio, and we hung out with James and Emily, Noah from Ready, Set, Keto. We hung out with Jackie from Jackie's Keto Journey, Jen Delaney from, it was just Jen Delaney, now it's, uh, um, I can't remember what her name is now, but you change names on me and it just confuses me <laughs> because my memory is not what it used to be. Um, I'll have to look up what her name is. And Matreya. Matreya, she hung out with... It was hard to kind of hang out with everybody because it was so busy. It was a holiday weekend on a Monday. It was one of the only days that we could kind of get everybody together. So it was a madhouse in that place. The place is utterly massive. They have <clears throat> all the international aisles. So if you want to get something that's maybe, you know, only from Australia only from India, things like that, they'll probably have at least something to what you're looking for. We have some international markets here in Indiana as well, but uh, not as themed as Jungle Gyms. Like when you walk outside, they've got like monorails and stuff and all kinds of cool kooky stuff going on in there. So Sparkly Susan says... Uh, uh, so she's asking where Shander is. Shander works a weekend option. So that's kind of why I'm doing this solo on Sundays because she works Saturday, Sundays uh, as a nurse, 12 hour shifts. Um, so she works Saturday, Sunday, and then it gives her five days off during the week. So we hang out with our granddaughter and do all what, you know, do whatever we need to do during the week. Um, it just means Saturday and Sundays, I'm kind of flying solo. Uh, she'll be home tonight around 8, 8.30 at night. She's left already this morning. She gets there about 7 a.m. So, um, yeah, so I figured I'm kind of home by myself. That's the reason behind wanting to do this stream because I get up with her, get her out the door, 
and then I, you know, make my coffee and then I would just kind of, you know, kind of, for lack of a better word, dick around until, you know, working on my own content or whatever it is I'm going to do for the day. So I figured I would at least try to make something constructive and talk with all of you awesome people because it gives me a chance to connect and it gives me a chance to have people to talk to because I kind of feel like Saturdays and Sundays, it's just me by myself and <clears throat> I get kind of lonely. I mean, it sounds probably more sad than it is, but then usually I kind of watch a movie or eat too much food or whatever. So hopefully this will help with some of that accountability. I hope you make it to our Friendsgiving. That'll be so much fun. Now, it's going to be crazy. I know, like, the last time we did one was in, in May, and it was, like, six hours. And it felt literally like 15 minutes. Like, we came in, talked, and it was cleaning up, and then I was at home. It was insane. Now, this year, I'm going to be cleaning up or getting there, hanging out, cleaning up, and then at home, and the next day, packing and getting everything ready, getting the car loaded up so we can go to Florida because we're leaving the 22nd in the evening to go to Florida for almost two weeks. So October is going to be crazy all the way around because October kicks off with KPL. Again, I have to talk about Keto Palooza. It's coming up. <clears throat> there is a countdown for ticket sales to be ending, but I, I imagine it's going to kind of come close between her not selling the tickets anymore and all the tickets being sold out. Last time I heard, there was about 20-some tickets left. So if you haven't got your tickets and you are looking to get your tickets for Keto Palooza, go over to ketopalooza.com or whatever it is. I'll put it in the description below. And make sure you get your ticket and come and hang out with us. So you moved into a new place. That's awesome. But sounds awful, too. I know if we ever move from this house... I don't care how much it costs, we're going to hire movers because I just don't want to do it anymore. A couple of years ago, uh, right at the time I was starting this channel, I was doing, so I was kind of like a three thing going on. I was starting the channel. We were getting new flooring in the house and I was doing a 21 day fast. So January 1st that year, I was doing, I started a 21 day fast to kick off the year. I was documenting it. There is a playlist for that in uh, the descriptions and then all the YouTube stuff down below. I was just starting out, so don't expect it to be awesome content by any stretch of the imagination. Me in front of the camera was brand new. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, so in the midst of doing a 21 day fast, we were changing floor or uh, getting new flooring in. And they were coming in to install it, but which we still had to move everything. So we had to move everything from the first floor into either the garage or upstairs. And then we had to move everything back into the house from the garage downstairs. Then we had to move everything from the upstairs around because they were putting carpet upstairs. We got like the laminate flooring downstairs, some laminate flooring in certain rooms upstairs, and then the carpet everywhere else. That was like a whole week long process. And if we came to moving from this house to another house, I would just say donate everything in this house and buy all new stuff because I don't want to move it anymore. Sounds awful. I don't envy you, John, not in the slightest. So Spooky says she's an hour north of James and Emily and uh, hoping to meet them sooner than later. They are super sweet. Week was good. So good. Ugh. I'm so glad that everybody's week is good so far. Um, because I think a lot of times we kind of get, especially with social media and everything, we can kind of get lost in like the sorrows of the daily of daily life of everybody. Like I'm just kind of remembering to remain positive. Like I try to do that. I try to remain as positive as possible because I mean, what else can we do? Let's see. John said, move to downtown Ocala. That is not a thriving metropolis, but definitely has different food, cool vibe. Let's, let's listen to the live music. We're going to be in Florida in October. I want to go to Tampa. There's a concert in Tampa that I want to go see. A band that's playing that hasn't played in about, I don't know. They think the last show they played was like, like the last tour they did was like 2010. Something like that. And they've played a couple one-off shows here and there. 
Um, and they're they're playing in in, uh, in Tampa, which is about ninety minutes from when we're staying. And it's gonna talk Shandon, you know, letting me go because I'll have to like take the car and go and be gone all night. I mean, when we went on vacation in Denver uh, last fall, I went and saw Clutch. Uh, so Clutch played Denver. They are my all time top favorite live band. Uh, that was my twenty fifth time seeing Clutch. Now I have since seen them here in Indy this year, and that was 26. So, Matrey is in the house. So glad you can join us, Matrey. I'm so glad you're here. I hope everything is good. I'm so, to be totally honest, I'm so glad I have like autofill on my phone. So I spelled your name a few times, and now it just kind of comes out automatically because I am a terrible speller. So I'm glad it does it for me. It really helps me out because, and if you ever see me misspell your name, it's not to be a butt, you know, a butthead or anything. I'm just terrible with spelling. Having an espresso and procrastinating. Pomeranian's nails today. He, uh, don't they all hate that? I've gone. I've seen shows all over the country. I mean, I've seen shows. I've seen. Uh, I got lucky enough to go to a show at the Whiskey in in Los Angeles. I've been to shows in Colorado, Missouri, Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio. I even played a show with my old band in um, years and years ago in Detroit, Kentucky. I don't know. We've just gone all over the place to see shows. Um, we've taken the kids to see shows. I've gone all over the place to see shows. Like concerts and live music is huge for me. So, like the state of things now, like the state of live music now, where everything is so expensive. Like seeing Clutch this time uh, was like. Would have been like I ended up getting a free ticket from a friend of mine um, because he decided not to go, but it was good. It would have cost like sixty dollars. Now, when I started seeing Clutch, they used to started playing here in my town in like small venues, and I would go every year. They'd play every year at the small venue, and it was like twelve dollars. Now, I'm not going to get into like the inflation and the rate of exchange between like you know 2005 and. 2023 and what the cost of $12 would be now or whatever. But, you know, it's easier to come up with $12 no matter what inflation is over 60. And then, you know, we've got all the other things like big shows coming through, like Smashing Pumpkins played here last night. I didn't go, but I did see them in like 1996 on the Infinite Sadness tour. Um, and they played with garbage that night. Um, I, I, don't, I can't remember who they played with here last night, but I'm sure the show was great. But it was in an outdoor place, and you got to pay extra to get close. I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm a very much a amps in the face type person. I like to be up front, music right in the face. I do wear earplugs, so I don't go prematurely deaf. I'm already kind of going that way, but uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the poor, the poor puppy. Matreya. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. But dogs, they do do that, don't they? Oh, Clutch is so good. Oh, man. I mean, the first time I ever saw Clutch was in St. Louis, Missouri, at a venue called The Galaxy. And I remember we were in line, and like the bouncers and all the door guys were super, like, super kind of like kind of dicks right because there was like it's a, a public sidewalk and we're all waiting in line and they're having up against the wall the building and we couldn't cross like this imaginary line on the sidewalk so people could continue walking and i get it but here i am you know like 19 years old no like, no i might have been 20 21 years old i don't know it was like 2000 so i was coming up on 21 it was uh i want to say it was the uh pure rock fury tour um but anyway um, we saw them, they came out, they did an amazing job. I've always loved, I mean, the only time they played indie that I didn't go see them that I'm aware of was in 98. They played the Emerson theater and 
even though I didn't go to that show, there was um, an opening band that's local here that because of that show, friends of mine who went then took me to see the local band and that sparked something to us. And I got into like being around local bands and promotion and doing, you know, all that stuff. I ended up doing some A&R work for a label and stuff here and there. Um, so yeah, it's weird how like one show could be uh life changing that I didn't even go to, but yeah. But then after that clutch, uh, that clutch show, uh, they were on tour with, um, I'm not going to be able to think of the name of it. But the next week, we went and saw the same tour in Cincinnati. So we were like Missouri, Cincinnati. But that Missouri show was cool because we saw Clutch that night in, in St. Louis. And the next night, we went up to um, a college town in Missouri. I can't think of the name of it right now. And saw Deftones at a uh, Holiday Inn Expo. So that was strange seeing, you know, Deftones. And we were waiting in line next to, like, hotel rooms and stuff. So that was cool. I've been to a lot of shows. I've probably seen a lot of bands that you may have heard of and definitely tons of bands that you have never heard of. But, yeah. Mm. I do love coffee. If you can see my stitch, we went to Build-A-Bear for the granddaughter's fifth birthday, and uh, I got a stitch. Because why not? I'm not a Disney fan or nothing. Danny Beach is in the house. Good morning to you. Good morning. Coffee? Don't mind if I do. Mm. But music and live shows is one of those things that I can talk about longer and probably more annoyingly than I can keto. Because I know if if you've been involved in our lives before, Shandra tells things about our kids where anything that happens, any problem that comes up in life, it could be solved. Well, if you if you were keto, you wouldn't have got that flat tire. <laughs> so they get annoyed, but uh, you know, you know how that goes. Shandra does. So she likes going to shows. I've gone to shows with her. Uh, she's gone to shows with me. But she's not into all of the same music that I'm into. We definitely have, you know, that Venn diagram that kind of, enter, you know, that that uh, that locks together. We've, you know, I've taken her to see Clutch a few times. Unfortunately, um, the last few times Clutch has played, she hasn't been able to go because of work. Um, but she has, you know, I've taken her to see Clutch here. And in Cincinnati, and she and we've taken her to see, uh, like so. There's a band called Say Anything, um, and they have an album is a Real Boy. It's an album called Is a Real Boy, and that's one of my favorite albums of all time. It's one of the strangest stories of why I like an album because we would play cards every Saturday night, and a friend of mine was on tour. Um, uh, with he was uh, filling in on bass for this band called Scarlet, and they were on Ferret Records. And they went on a on a couple month tour, and the whole time the whole band was playing this album by saying anything. And so when he got off tour, he came back, and we were playing cards. And so he kept putting it on every night. And I'm like, oh, why are we listening to this album? And it got to the point where I had to just go download it. You know, it was like 2005. This album came out in 2005, so it was like 2005, 2006. I go and download it, and it's been one of my favorite records of all time. If you ever get a chance to listen to it, it's like a poppy punk kind of album. It's just real, like, tongue-in-cheek. The lyrics are masterful on that record. Uh, Max Bemis is the lead singer. I have taken Chandra to see Max Bemis Acoustic, and then he has a project with his wife, um, and I can't think of the name of them right now. Perma. I think it's called Perma. And they played, um, and I've taken the kids and Chandra to see Say Anything multiple times. Actually, one night uh, for Cheyenne, or for Cheyenne's uh, like fifteenth birthday, fourteenth or fifteenth birthday, uh, we got our tickets to go see Say Anything in Chicago. So her birthday comes around, and we say, you know, we've got you tickets for a show. We're not going to tell you what show it is. So the night of the show comes, and we drive to Chicago, just the three of us, and we get there. She sees the marquee. She's like, oh, 
you know, the show's great. They, you know, they play with like the front bottoms and stuff. And it was awesome. And coming out of the show, we're coming down the stairs and we come out the front door heading towards the parking lot. Well, for whatever reason, Max Bemis comes out the same door as us. And he's walking next to us on the sidewalk. So again, Max Bemis, singer for the band that she is in love with at the time. Shander notices it, stops him. He is highly annoyed because he has now found himself right in the thick of this crowd of people who were going to not let him get away without having photos and autographs. And I think he is uh, a little um, uh, pharmaceutically endowed, if you will, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what got, I don't know how he got turned around and got out that door, but he did. And there is a picture of uh, of them, the three of them, Chandra, Cheyenne, and Max, all together. And he is not thrilled. <laughs> it's actually comical how upset he looks in the photo. But uh, yeah, so and then we've taken them up to Cleveland to see them play because they were doing "Is a Real Boy" in its entirety, and that was amazing for me. Uh, they played with um, a couple other bands that played uh, full albums, too. Um, it was like a tour kind of thing. So, yeah. Music really is so good for the soul. Like, and I've taken the youngest boy to see shows. Like, I've taken him to see, like, death metal shows. And that's kind of what I like heavier stuff. Um, a majority of the stuff that I'm into is much heavier. Uh, like, you know death metal type stuff um i don't necessarily talk about it all that much because i know it's not all that popular um and it is kind of polarizing and dividing um but i don't know it's what i'm into uh so i i'm lucky that a lot of those shows are still affordable and a lot of the bands that i like will still play and play small venues um depending if they're from out of the country I may have to go to Chicago or other, you know, out of state to see them play. Um, but a lot of the bands that I like and other genres and the metal persuasion don't play the United States. Um, so hopefully one day I get a chance to go over to Europe and see some of them. But, you know. But I hope that that answered your question, John. I know I kind of got convoluted, but we've gone to shows together. She likes, uh, I've gone with her to see different stuff. Um, we took uh, the young, the granddaughter to her first show. That was, uh, um, I don't know what's wrong with my brain tonight, but uh, or this morning or whatever, right? But we took her to see uh, the Violent Femmes. So we took her to see Violent Femmes, and they were opening up for uh, Ben Folds. Unfortunately, because having the granddaughter with us, she got restless, and we didn't get a chance to stick around to see Ben Folds which bummed me out, but I got to see the Violent Femmes, which is one of those bands I think everybody's heard of, everybody's listened to at least once. Everybody knows the Blister in the Sun song. So, you know. <laughs> I don't know how good I am for your soul, but <laughs> here I am. Uh, uh, music is Music is one of those things that over the years that I wouldn't be around without music. I mean, you know, having, you know, whether it's listening over the time that I got a chance to make music or promote music, um, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for music. Now I'm lucky enough to be, you know, to have a platform where we can talk about keto lifestyle and all that stuff and this kind of stuff. Because I think the Sunday morning coffee is going to be more uh, like whatever we want to talk about. Um, but yeah, like... I listen to a lot of podcasts myself now. Like I was dashing yesterday for a couple of hours and I was just listening to Joe Rogan. Uh, listening to the rest of the episode where he had some people talking about UFOs. And I don't know. It's just fascinating to me. That kind of stuff. Whether you believe it or not. It's just uh, fascinating. Um, interesting. Something definitely to think about. Um, but I just like... I. Podcasts are huge for me, so yeah, Joe Rogan, I like him. I like listening to. There's a a Disney Dish podcast that I like, where they get into the nitty gritty and talk about uh, all the stuff that uh, that 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 the Imagineers did and 
how you know all the parks that we know and love how they came to be and all that stuff so i'm a big nerd when it comes to music and disney and i got really down to the nitty-gritty when it came to the ketogenic lifestyle too so when i started i got into i was watching like low carb down under which is a fantastic series if you haven't watched any of those there's a whole youtube channel based on all the talks that comes out of australia there's low carb usa as well i've watched a good amount of those but uh, there's so many there's so many great pieces of content on those channels together uh, that you can totally deep dive and watch and kind of see also as things have evolved over time as well like when I, you know and you know in 2016 starting off with the ketogenic lifestyle the the big thing was moderate your protein you know high fat you know moderate protein and now you're kind of getting into where you're not moderating your protein and things are turning more ketovore carnivore and so you can kind of start to see those shifts as we start to learn things. So, the, you know, and in the beginning, the reason why the the protein was moderated is because of the thought the thought path that uh, gluconeogenesis was uh, amount of protein driven. So, like, if you eat three pounds of protein, you're going to force yourself into gluconeogenesis, therefore raising your blood sugar and all that stuff. But over time, we've we've come to discover that gluconeogenesis is more demand driven so it doesn't really necessarily matter how much protein you're eating it's only if your body is requiring that glucose will it then start to break down the protein into gluconeogenesis and manufacture that necessary glucose to power your brain or whatever it is that you need so yeah there's a lot of fascinating information out there um, and and it's super fascinating as time has gone on and you can even, you know, depends on, you know, you can watch, say, like the Emmerich. So they talk about, you know, the fat and how fat can raise blood sugar and different things like that. And it can get kind of confusing as well. So that one still kind of weirds me out because I saw uh, I saw Craig at uh, at Low Carb for Better Health in Tennessee. And he had a talk and talked about fat and, and how and, and that kind of got me thinking about my fat consumption. Um, and then I know that Maria is going to be at KPO and I know she's a polarizing figure as well. I think I may at least see some of her talk because I'm, I'm always curious with dissenting information. So like if, if there's somebody who's talking differently about something, they have a different idea. It fascinates me because I'm not always so sure that I'm 100% right. Even though sometimes when it comes to keto, I'm like, I know I'm right. I know it works, but I have to be able to look and appreciate other sides of things because we know that not everybody's the same. Not everybody reacts the same because we see that with things like chalk zero people who are type one diabetic and have the monitors and see that it doesn't increase their blood spike or their blood sugar spikes and all that. And then people who it can throw them way out of whack. So it's very interesting. And it's some of the, it's very, very important that we do pay attention to, you know, kind of a little bit of everything and not be so monofocused on everything. Let's see. So Sparkly Susan says, she loves listening to Joe Rogan, been listening to Andrew Huberman's YouTube channel a lot. Yeah, yeah, I've not listened to too much Andrew Huberman. Um, I need to kind of, you know, dive into that as well. I get caught up on Joe Rogan. His podcasts are like three or four hours long which takes me a few days to get through, um, and, you know, because I don't go anywhere very often. And podcasting is usually car, like when I'm in the car or sitting somewhere or grocery shopping. They take headphones with me and I'll walk to the grocery store listening to podcasts uh, and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, it still usually takes me a while. So getting through a bunch of them uh, takes a while for me. Yes, 100%. So she asked if I have audiobooks. I have an Audible subscription. Yeah, so the bad thing about Audible is they will email you and they'll send you like $5 books. Here's the secret with Audible. I don't know I don't know if, what service you're using, but Audible like so Audible's like $16 a month and you get one credit. Never use that credit for a book that's less than $16. Always go for like a twenty or thirty dollar book. Anything that's like right around your point, buy with cash. 
And then anything sale wise, always buy with cash or buy with, you know, buy outside of your credit. Don't use your credit unless it's, unless you're getting something more than what, you know, you're, you know, so if your subscription 16 bucks a month, try to go for a 20 or $30 book with the credit and then everything else buy with cash. I've got tons of like two, three, $4 books. Um, I found a lot of great book series that way, uh, like fantasy books. And I've got all my you know, Harry Potter books on there. I've got the Aragon series in there, all kinds of, all kinds of books. There's a monster hunter international stuff. Because sometimes you just want to be whisked away somewhere and hear about somebody else's problems with dragons and stuff <laughs> and not so much like politics and everything. Because I think even with Joe Rogan, there's a lot of that that seeps in um, and that can be kind of tiring. So every once in a while, I'll kind of put podcasts on hold and I'll go and listen to a bunch of books. Usually so when we go uh, to Florida this year, we'll throw a book on. I've got a book that's waiting. It's a new book in a series. Uh, if you if you have Prime, there's the Terminal List. Uh, series with uh, Chris Pratt. <clears throat> well, that's from a book called Terminalist, and it's a whole series uh, about this guy. Um, and the books are obviously better. To me, I'm only a few episodes into the show, and it's so much different than the books that it kind of throws me off. But uh, I don't know, kind of, I don't even know kind of where it's going. I kind of know where how it'll end, but like, you know. Let's see. But yes, I have a total obsession with uh, with those. I don't know why I can't find my mouse. There we go. So Matreya says that <clears throat> she did a little series breaking down keto ratios since I don't have keto for weight loss or since you don't keto for weight loss. I So I'm still keto for weight loss. I'm obviously still big. Um, I'm a lot less than I was seven, eight years ago. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, obviously I've still got my journey ahead of me. And obviously I feel better I'm not going back. Everything is better. Mental clarity, just overall life is better. Now, if I have, if I was skinnier, would I be happier in theory? But then I think I would kind of run across like, you know, some of the things we're seeing with some people that have lost weight where now they're like, now what do we do now? You know, I'm not losing 10 pounds a month anymore. I'm, you know, lucky to bounce back and forth the same one or two pounds. And that kind of gets frustrating for people. So that's not something that I look forward to, but lucky enough that I get to experience it through other creators and other people sharing their journeys to where, I understand and I can expect that to be something that I may have to deal with eventually. I don't know. I am still kind of stuck in the fact that I don't know if I'll ever be thin, thin, quote unquote. Um, I would like to get to like 220. That would be something that would be, I mean, I haven't been 220 since the first time I hit 220 on the way up. I've been above 250, 275 for most of my life. So getting down in that range, I don't know what a healthy range is for me. And that's one thing since we've started the journey is I don't know what a healthy range is for me. I just kind of have an idea of an area like below 250, above 200. I think if I got down to 200 or less, I'd probably look weird. I mean, maybe, but I don't know. That's all things that, you know, to take into consideration, right? So, yeah, and I understand, and I know that there, I know she's very polarizing, and there's a lot of things that she posts on Twitter that I will kind of question. Um, And she's, and she's, you know, she'll respond to me on Twitter and stuff, and we have conversations here and there, uh, because, I mean, there's a lot of questions. I think when you're someone that's, you know, that's like the same thing I was talking on Neely's chat yesterday. So you can see like Paul Saldino and uh, and uh, Thomas DeLauer have conversations about adding like 200 grams of glucose back into their diet. Well, the thing about those two is they're in a situation where they're like at peak physical condition for the most part, right? They're both in wonderful shape. You know, they work out all the time so they have 
and it, you know they have a different set of circumstances than a majority of people who are coming to this lifestyle to lose weight and then to kind of get that conflicting information well you can add 200 grams of honey to your diet and i think there's and it's not that they're disingenuous i think that they are not necessarily putting the disclaimer out there that this is for people who are at the end of their journey and have got into like really good shape. And I think that gets lost, you know, and at least that's how I see it. Maybe others will see it differently. But I, you know, I worry that somebody may see that and go, oh, I can add rice back in my diet. I can do whatever. Right. And I'm like, I mean, maybe it might work for you. I mean, it because, you know, what works for me or doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work or will work for others. We're all a little different and we all have to kind of find our own tweaks and, and hacks, if you will. So I don't know. Oh, I, that's why I make a big coffee, John. But back to you, Matreya. So I'm not necessarily anti her. I think she has a different perspective and, and her way will help some but I don't think her way is for everyone. So I think definitely like if I hit like a, like where I'm at now where I feel like I'm in a stall and have been for a long time, maybe, you know, like the idea, like, you know, fat as a lever is something that I could look into and, you know, lower kind of like my fat intake to kind of get an, you know, to kind of get an understanding. Is that going to be something that is sustainable? Is it going to work for me? I definitely think there's room for, different ideas and i think we have to consider a lot of things you know obviously there's going to be wackadoo things out there there are you know the people out there who are like i only eat pop tarts calories in calories out mm, lift weights and eat pop tarts you know what i mean that's not going to be good for anybody but i think with the emmerichs i think they have a way of looking at things i think I, I mean obviously they get invited to you know these low carb events and such and i don't necessarily know if it's because they have a clout or whatever uh, or if what they have to say is actually valid. But I think it's definitely something to listen to. And I understand, like I said, I understand that they're polarizing, dividing. There's a lot of different people out there. I imagine there's people out there who don't like Dr. Barry. I mean, I don't know. I haven't really heard anybody say that. And I'm not saying that that's a thing, but I'm saying like chances are they're out there. Yes. Audible use the, yeah. I mean, there's no reason to buy like a cheap book. Have I done it before? Like didn't have enough money. Like am I, you know, didn't have the extra money to spend on a, on a cheaper book and used a credit. Yeah. But I've got hundreds of books in my audible account and uh, yeah, but I just, I can't wait to go on our trip. We listen to a whole book. We well, like, I remember like the first time, well, Shannon and I went to Florida on our own. And we were listening to season three of Serial. Because I got hooked on season two of Serial. I didn't listen to season one, but season two hooked me. Season three was all about Cleveland and their legal system. And basically how they have, uh, I mean, works the same way all across the country where they stack charges. So you get arrested and they're charging you with like 10 to 12 different things because they're going to stack as much as they can onto you to try to get you convicted of something, whatever will stick. And that was basically how that really works against a lot of people. And it's just not good for society. But uh, we listened to that whole podcast, like all the way to and from Florida, with exception of like, there was like one or two episodes that didn't come out while we were on the trip. But yeah, we've listened to, you know, books on the way to Alabama and back. And uh, well, I listen, Shander will start, and then she falls asleep. Libby app is free with your library card. I like that. That sounds cool. I like, though, I like with Audible, there's exclusives and stuff, and you can listen to things that are Audible exclusives that don't use a point. Um, but I need to look at that to see if there's things that... Uh, aren't on audible as well i tried listening to podcasts at like two times speed but it was like i was listening to the chipmunks now it wasn't so much when they were talking 
but I listened to you know a good amount of comedy podcasts and they laugh a lot. The laughter was annoying at, at that speed. Maybe 1.75 might be a little bit better. Um, well, I don't always do that. Our kids do, and they never hear anything we say. So I imagine that that's why your wife gets mad. But I can't do that too much. Like, even when I'm at the grocery store, I'll stop it when I get into, like, the checkout line and stuff. Or people will try to talk to me, and I'm like, hold on. And I try to pause and pull earbud out, and I don't know. I, like, yeah. I just try not to do that because I, yeah. I I have a hard enough time paying attention to her as it is. I mean... <laughs> I mean, for I mean, so for us, like communication is like one of the things that I love the most about her and how open we are and how well we mesh together in our inside jokes and like we can say jokes and think about things at the same time. And yeah, so let's see what this says here. Oh, I am good and behind. Okay. So Pam was saying that when she reaches her goal weight, she's going to shift her focus to maintaining and not going back, maybe adding a few things back like dairy, which may be causing a stall. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, you're just kind of finding out what is going to be bothering you. Welcome, Cindy. You overslept, huh? Good job. But welcome anyway. We're so glad that you're here. Well, I mean, <laughs> vegans. Um, I mean, there's a. I mean, there's always going to be a lot of people that don't like Doctor Barry. There's always going to be people who don't like his. It's probably not so much his message. I think sometimes there's going to be people who don't like his delivery, if you will. If that makes any sense, he's very to the point, matter of fact, and some people just don't like that. Some people won't like the message. I mean, there's people who don't like keto. I mean, there's people who still hang on to the calories in, calories out model. So, you know. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, yeah, like I said, just kind of spitballing about people not like not liking Dr. Barry. But, the, you know, the, the, the PSMF, I haven't actually tried it. So I don't know if it's something that would work for me or not. That's why I say that I, you can't necessarily discount what people say, you know, what kind of people and their perspective and what works for them, what doesn't work. Um, because we know that everybody is so, is so different. So I didn't get a chance to talk to him. I just got a chance to shake his hand for just a, a brief second. Um, while we were in uh, Tennessee, but it's like, I don't like to bother people. And I know that like, I try not to be fanboy as well. So I'll be somebody who kind of stands off to the side and just kind of hang out um and i know that there's a lot of people that like especially at those events those people should you know those people who just show up and like their whole thing is they want to talk to dr barry and that i mean that's obviously you know, that's awesome that's what it's there for but i'm never you know as someone i just maybe at kpl there'll be a chance i could sit down and talk with him or something or get a chance to talk to him for a few minutes i did get a great chance to talk to eric westman dr eric westman that was awesome that was kind of one of those things that was super exciting for me because he's one of the doctors that I've been following for a long time. Um, so that was really cool to get a chance to have a couple of minutes with him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like, it's like, then you're like listening to them laugh like chipmunks. I haven't heard of that one yet. I'll have to take a look. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to broach the subject on this, right? Because I have I have a friend who's type 1 diabetic and kidney failure on dialysis and all this stuff. And I was like, you know, and her doctor you know, couldn't figure out why her blood sugars were eight, 900. They couldn't, they just can't get her blood sugars under control. And then I would see she's eating spaghetti for dinner and she's eating cake and all this stuff. And I'm like, there's the reason you're not getting your blood sugars in order. And I had to try to have a conversation with them, her and her mother, and they got very angry with me. So I just, 
you know, because I, you know, their doctor's telling them one thing and here I'm trying to tell her do the opposite of her doctor. Obviously I'm not a doctor or a healthcare professional, any of that kind of stuff. But, you know, you see somebody you care about and you see them going through these struggles and you know that there is something that they could do that's more than just injecting more insulin into their body and trying to keep something under control because, you know, seeing friend, you know, your friend go through these things and going into ketoacidosis and all this stuff and ending up in hospitals. It's just so hard. And you see friends, you know, I mentioned that, you know, have you tried doing this? And they're like, why doctor didn't say that? And I'm like, okay, I back off. I mean, I figure if somebody is really willing to make a change or they're curious, they're going to reach out to me. It's very difficult to have that mentality because you want to help those you care about. You want to help those that you love. You want to help those that mean a lot to you. Even with the kids. So our middle kid uh, was went out with his friends on Friday night, had too much to drink, and was feeling crappy when I was talking to him yesterday. And I said, you know, he wasn't going to get much sleep before work. And I said, well, maybe try some electrolytes. And he's like, okay, I was just going to drink an energy drink. I'm like, well, that's not an electrolyte. That's going to give you caffeine, but it's not going to necessarily make you feel better. And, you know, I mean, people are going to listen when they want to listen. They're not going to listen. They're going to they're going to lock up and they're just going to bear down and they're going to just fight you if they're not ready. When I was over 400 pounds, if I wasn't ready, well, I wasn't ready for a long time. I knew I was big. Everybody knew I was big. Not many people would say something. And when somebody would say something, it was an awful thing for them to say, like, how dare you tell me that I shouldn't eat this ice cream because I'm too big already? How dare you? And I think rightfully so, how dare you? I mean, I know it comes from a place of love. It comes from a place of caring. But it's not going to make me listen to you. And they're not going to listen. Maybe they will. Most likely they won't. It's like the whole thing. It's like if you know your best friend's husband is cheating on them, you can't go tell them that. They're not going to listen to you. They're going to blame the messenger. Now, is that still the right thing to do? I don't know. But I know over the years, people are only going to listen to what they're ready to hear. So that's what makes what we do so important, whether you're a creator, whether you're a person who just shares your journey on other groups, on your own Facebook page, Twitter, whatever it is, sharing out your successes, your failures, even the mundane stuff, like I didn't increase weight, but I didn't lose weight. So, you know, that's a, you know, I'm still kind of here. Still big. All those things will add up to people seeing it. And hopefully it'll help them get ready to reach out and make a difference. Because they have to be ready. John Guggenhan says, Made a Starbucks fall flavor pour over so good. I'm, the, I'm on the big screen. <laughs> Coming at you, O3D. Um, that's amazing. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube downstairs on our 75-inch TV. Um, watch a lot of YouTube that way. Um, I see what a lot of people do with coffee. The pour overs. I even have a French press I've never used. I'm not even sure I know how to use it. I see all that stuff, and I'm like, I've got a machine. I just push button. I mean, I know people put a lot of care and thought and effort into making that perfect cup of coffee, getting the water temperature just right. And I'm like, I don't know if that's for me. I'm sure it's delicious. Uh, I've been talking and not drinking. Hmm. Yeah, I was trying to tell him that, but, you know, he's 23, and he knows everything. So I, I put it out there. We've got electrolytes downstairs. I've got Element and various other stuff downstairs. So he can pick and choose whatever he wants. I did hear, and I don't know if anybody else heard, but the lemon habanero Element will be discontinued. 
I'm not affiliated. We don't work together. We're not partners or anything like that. But um, Joe, the other night on the, the Two Crazy Ketos live stream, was talking about the lemon habanero will be discontinued. So once they're gone, they're gone. So if that's a flavor you're into, I would stock up. I was not much of a fan of it. It didn't have a lot of flavor, and it just had a weird back end heat that tickled my throat. So it just wasn't something that I was that I was really into because it didn't do much for me. So it says people resist hearing things about stopping addictions. Same with people on drugs, especially with all the advertising that brainwash people into believing that the junk food isn't bad. That's the thing. Like one thing sticks out to me. So I don't know if, if any of you ever watched shark tank, I'm sure most of you have, or at least know what it is. But I remember one time I was sitting and I was watching shark tank and years and years ago, cause I think my mom and grandma were both still around. And, um, and there was a, a person coming out with some flavor of cotton candy. I don't know what flavor it was. It was a pumpkin spice. I don't know. It was a cotton candy of some flavor. And it only had so many calories or whatever. Mark Cuban was sitting there and goes, this should be huge on the package. Only X calories, only 45 calories or 90 calories or whatever per serving. And it was like, that should be forefront on the package. And I was thinking to myself, I think it was pre-keto too. I'm like, I don't think that's how that works. I mean, like I said, I was probably, I, at that point, I was definitely pre-keto because if my mom was still alive, I definitely wasn't keto. Um, but yeah, I just remember seeing like, that's just the way advertising goes. It's so strange. It's going to be so awesome. High fives for everyone and hugs if you're into it. That's what I, that's why, I mean, I got it at a yard sale. It's brand, it was brand new in the box. Got it for like $4. Uh, but I just haven't used I even got like Disney coffees to use with it and stuff. I just never did. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I need to do it. I was going to make a whole video series about coffee, but I put like some feelers out and stuff on, on the page and nobody really seemed to be that interested in, in videos of me tasting different coffees. So I didn't, I didn't bother making the content. Um, I mean, that's really all you can do, right? So, I mean, just continue to put out your own successes and and wherever you know that they're looking and just hope and pray and do whatever it is that you... Because going to them, is just, it's just not going to work. It's going to like, you know, I feel that like I just get angry when they don't listen to me. And I don't want to be angry at them. Because I know they're doing what they think is right. They're doing what the doctor is telling them. And if you're doing what the doctor is telling you to do and it's not working, then you think there's something wrong with you. And I think that's the biggest thing. Even doctors look at you like that. If you're doing what the doctor tells you and you're not getting the results the doctor anticipates you'll get, the doctor will look at you and assume it's non-compliance. They'll look at you and assume you're not following their directions. Even if you're following it to the T or as best as humanly possible, you're taking the medication, you're eating your 12 servings of whole grains, you're eating your fruit, you're watching your fat, and you're not seeing success and your blood pressure is not coming down, and your A1C is not coming down, and your blood sugars are always high, the doctor will assume that it's non-compliance. And you're thinking there's something wrong with you. That is what's so wrong about the whole medical system at this point. You can do everything your doctor tells you to do, It won't, and, it, and if it, I should say it, it won't work. I should say, if you're doing everything your doctor is telling you to do, and if it doesn't work, you're going to blame yourself for it. 
because obviously there's something more wrong with you than the doctor understands. Instead of thinking maybe there's something wrong with the advice the doctor is giving. It's devastating to think about that. And I don't even think us as keto carnivore, ketovore people even consider it. So I don't know. Let's see what other, other people are saying. So if you're gonna you're gonna need to order some more lib and habanero. There's another Guga hand in this chat. Is there? I don't think I didn't notice it. Back when low fat was the way to eat, my favorite thing was licorice because it was fat free. Same thing with like my mom and grandma would bring home those uh those snack well cake cookies because they were fat free. And I remember my grandma making rice aroni. Now, rice aroni is delicious. Rice aroni is amazing. But she was like, this is low fat. You can eat as much as you want. And of course, I would get stuffed on rice aroni. The San Francisco treat. <laughs> it's just weird to think back like, you know, dry chicken breast, uh, rice aroni. Even though rice aroni is delicious. That, that stuff is fantastic. It's amazing. It tastes great. Not good for you. But it's funny to think back that my grandma would be like, this is low fat. Eat as much as you want. That doesn't help somebody with food addiction. Spoiler alert. Five of six of my family that I talked to about my video or talked about on my video about family success on keto will be at KPL this year. That's amazing, Cindy. I'm so excited to see everybody. High fives and hugs. It's going to be so good. I'm super excited for KPL. I'm super duper excited. Like like I said last week on the on on last week on Sunday, we, Adam's coming and uh as far as I understand, Lindsay uh, and her husband are coming as well. Uh, we've got everybody. The whole band's going to be back together. Brenda says good morning. Welcome. Glad you're here. I think maybe they were like were responding to both of you, maybe, or they got they got the names confused. Honey, I mean, I think honey is kind of one of those things that, like, it's weird seeing, like, the carnivore people coming out and, like, adding honey to their food and stuff. And I think if you're in a certain spot, honey's probably fine. Watermelon's probably fine. Because I don't think, so, I don't think it, it's, like, stuff like watermelon and apples and stuff like that on the, in the long grand scheme of, like, how I got to where I was. I didn't get over 400 pounds because I was eating apples. I didn't get to over 400 pounds because I was eating honey. I probably had less than a cup of honey my entire life, probably. But I think of like, I think, you know, it's not because of Brussels sprouts or broccoli or it's because I would eat Oreos. I would eat corn dogs, <laughs> lots of corn dogs, lots of macaroni and cheese. I would eat, you know, huge servings of stuffing and mashed potatoes and gravy. And I was just putting carbs on carbs on my carbs into my belly every night. So I think like, I don't necessarily think watermelon isn't healthy. Is it far sugarier than it? sugarier? Sugary is far more sugary than it used to be. But I don't think water, I maybe mean, a watermelon every once in a while, unless you're like, you know, someone who needs to keep your blood sugars at a super low for health reasons or like that. I, I, I haven't had watermelon in a while, but if I had a piece of watermelon, probably wouldn't hurt me. I don't know. I just think, Honey's not, I mean, I don't think honey's all that bad. I don't think watermelon's all that bad. But I mean, obviously, we should probably be, you know, not having it all the all the time. But, you know, let's see. I'm trying to make sure I get here. Uh, 
<laughs> so you thought your nephew was in here. Well, bring him in. Tell him I said hi. Fat free, eat a giant bag of jelly beans. <laughs> oh, man. Like, oh, just all the weird, like the fat free. And then like, I, and I worked in an office for a long time. And I would have all the different people in the office going through these different diets every other week. Like, like there was a diet where you took orange juice, like about just a small amount in your cup, and you filled the rest with water, and you drank on that all day, and you would just keep refilling it all day. That's what you would drink. It's just like a little bit of orange juice, a whole lot of water. So it's just like water, like like kind of like uh, like a hint of orange in your water. And they're like, I'm losing all this weight, yay! And I'm like. Okay. It's just so weird to see that stuff. Oh, that's the thing. Like you, I mean, it is. So that's the thing for like, for certain people, a few cubes turns into half a watermelon turns into the whole watermelon. So that's a video that I want to make is my journey with like food addiction because food addiction is terrifying. You know, it goes back to what I was saying, like when I was in McDonald's yesterday, picking up a DoorDash order, seeing, you know, that uh, Colt's meal and thinking to myself, that's what I would have ordered. I would have just ordered that. Or like when I went, so we just got um, Raising Cane's in our, in like in Avon, Indiana, near where I live. And it's the first time we've had them. I've seen them in other cities, of, you know, states we've passed through before. But I was like, okay, it's a new restaurant. I want to try it. Looked at the menu, nothing keto about that place. But I was thinking to myself, you know what? I really just want to try it one time. It's probably not going to be that great. But the food addiction in me came out when I went to order. I didn't stop myself either. So they have like the different combos. And then they have like what's called a Caniac combo. You get like six chicken tenders, thing of fries, coleslaw. They were out of coleslaw, so they bumped me up and gave me extra fries. So, I mean, it's difficult to keep that stuff under wraps. Even, even this far into my journey, I still have times where, like, my desire to try something new overrides my brain going, I don't need that. And my brain's like, yes, you do. And I go get it. But I have a lot more control over my day-to-day -day life. Day So my overall 95, 98% of my life, I have so much more control that if that, you know, that craving comes in for me to go try something that's new in town and I got to go try it. Because I think if I didn't, it would probably be worse for me in the long run. Does that make sense? And I don't know if everybody's the same way, but you kind of have to, sometimes you have to kind of pick your battles when you're dealing with like with, with food addiction. Because food addiction is one of those weird things, right? It's not like alcohol or drugs because you can stop alcohol and you can stop drugs and never do them again and you'll live. But with food addiction, you can never stop eating. You just have to pick and choose the foods that will, that, that will sustain you and help you battle those triggers, battle those addictions, and keep being healthy and, and teach your body how to thrive. But I think it's for me, it's going to be a lifelong battle that I'm going to lose fights here and there. I mean, that's being realistic. I don't think I'm ever going to get to a place in my life where I say, you know what, I'm not going to have that, even though I know in my heart of hearts that I shouldn't. Rick wins in the house. The dogs let you sleep this morning. I'm trying to see if I'm not, I'm trying not to miss anything. Yeah. I think if you're just eating like watermelon every day and I miss cantaloupe. I remember I used, my great grandmother used to give me cantaloupe and put salt on it. And she was also like my great grandmother was a woman too, where she was born in 1912. So you know that she grew up eating a completely different way than she was eating when I was around. She was eating like, like 
not low carb bread, but low calorie bread, like basically was just thin sliced bread. She would take her cottage cheese and strain it off the way, but eat the curds. Fat free this and fat free that. But she's also the one that taught me how to cook with bacon grease. So I'm not really sure, you know, th those old habits die hard, right? But, you know, so she was forced into eating healthy, which I don't, I mean, she still lived to be 87. So she still made it pretty far. But I think those were the days when all like the health crazes were coming in because my great grandfather would drink slim fast. He'd have a big belly. And I don't know what I don't know what he was eating that would cause that. I mean, because he would eat whatever she cooked. And uh, so I honestly don't know. I don't remember like what I know they would eat a lot of beans, like butter beans and all that stuff. They would eat a lot of that stuff. Cornbread cereal so it's probably really what it was but binging so that's the problem it's like one piece isn't bad but it's like yeah so that's like i just try not to bring i mean it's like i'd love to have cantaloupe oh it's so delicious and i think in history among humans when cantaloupe was fresh and sitting there on on the ground ready to be eaten we ate it we didn't say no. We probably evolving as humans ate whatever we could get our hands on. Meat, vegetables, whatever grew wild that we knew wouldn't kill us. Fruits. I'm sure if we could get if we like if you were like a nomadic tribe walking past of an apple tree, I'm sure you loaded up on apples and you had apples for the next couple of days. I'm sure we did. But now we have an overabundance of food every day in our grocery stores, on TV, showing us what we need. And uh, the other day I was watching a uh, and like the first episode of The Price is Right. The very first episode. I think it was a half an hour episode. And they left the commercials in. And they were talking about certs. And they were talking about shredded wheat. And they were like, you know, use the whole grain. It's healthier. <laughs> It's just so weird, even like in the 70s, that was starting to kind of leak in. The 60s and the 70s was all starting to leak in. And, and then we obviously got to the 80s and the 90s and where we are now. And Matreya says, you know, she obviously eats vegetables. The vegetable spree on my YouTube, looking forward to sharing. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Koalarby. That's going to be cool. I'm not sure what that is, so I'll have to... If I don't catch it live, I'll have to watch the replay to see what that is. Because I know I have to go out on DoorDash later today. Yeah, that's the thing. It's all breaded and French fries, and they've got crinkle-cut fries, which oh, I love crinkle-cut fries. <laughs> but I think, I think for me, I think for me, I just... I knew I shouldn't have gone to get it. I shouldn't have gone to get it. But I think if I didn't go get it and try it, it would have weighed on me and it probably would have manifested in other ways. And I may have gone and picked up other stuff in this grocery store that I didn't need that probably would have lasted longer, maybe. I don't know. I think you just kind of have to know yourself and understand. Like I said, that's the problem with food addiction. You can't not eat. You know, I can't just not eat forever. I have to find a weird uh, it's not weird i guess i have to find a healthy balance between day-to-day -day foods that allow me to find success and still find a way to not give in to the addiction even though i think sometimes i'm going to but that's why i think having this community is so important because even if i do go have that meal and it's off and bad and I know I'm going to feel like trash the next day. I have, I'm going to feel like trash the next day. That's going to be a reminder of why I shouldn't do it. And I've got you lovely people who are going to be here to encourage me and to show me, you know, the path to, you know, to, to continue success. Yes. So, that's the thing. I think that's one thing when we're starting a ketogenic lifestyle 
or you're starting any kind of lifestyle for that matter, like finding out what your addiction is. So I don't know if any of you have done this, but Shannon and I have done this before. We'll have like, we'll designate like a Friday night or something like that every once in a while to go and get something from the grocery store that's off plan whether it's like a bag of chips or like some ice cream or like a frozen pizza, whatever. Right. But walk, like I'll go do the grocery shopping and I will walk up and down the aisles and I have no idea what I want. Nothing looks good, which is probably an indicator that I don't need it anyway. And obviously I know I don't. And then usually I'll settle on something like, like it's just a frozen pizza, maybe some sherbet or something like that, you know, like, but I just, I'm lucky that I don't go crazy with the candy and Oreos and, because I remember when I was, I was living with my grandmother, helping her out. And this was after my mom was gone before I started keto. I would come home and a typical meal for me was like a box of corn dog nuggets like a box of macaroni and cheese and some tomato soup mixed in or something like that. So that's like a meal for like six people and I would eat it and I would feel miserable. Then I would go get ice cream. That's the epitome of, of food addiction. Coming to that, you know, coming to that realization that I have legitimate food addiction, like where I start eating something and I can't stop. You know, that's why I have to be careful. And I i mean, understanding what your food triggers are. Like I've, you know, it's ice cream or it's pizza or, you know, all that stuff. I, I don't luckily have an issue with meat, eggs, cheese. Sometimes I'll cook more food for myself than I should. But it's harder to indulge and eat more of that food than I should. But even if I do sometimes, I still don't have the negative consequences that I would have had had it been carb heavy, you know, chicken nuggets or pizza rolls or all those things that I would eat because it was easy to keep in the freezer, pop them in the oven, get home from work, eat it, watch TV, basically carb crash and pass out and then wake up and go to work. I mean, it's, I mean, it really is similar to being like an alcoholic and I know a lot of alcoholics and people who use, you know, narcotics and such will scoff at the idea that a food addiction is anything close to what they're going through. But as someone who's gone through it, I think it really is. I mean, yeah, I wasn't drinking a fifth of Jack Daniels a night, but I was eating like six or seven people's worth of food every night. And that's just as damaging. And I don't think people can take that into account. But also, I think people will look at that and go, well, just don't eat. Just eat less. Move more. Thanks. It's just, it was just not that easy because food is comforting. Food is love. Food is life, right? I mean, as as long as I can remember, I you know, as as a kid, food was a way that my family showed love, and I'm sure almost every single one of us grew up that way. My great grandmother would cook for us. My grandmother would cook for me. My mom would cook for me and my brother, and it was always out of love. They wanted us to have food. They wanted us to feel happy. They wanted us to be full and not hungry because being hungry was sad, and we didn't want to be sad, right? So, yeah. Let me get back to some of these comments. Let's see. Let me see here. Let me see where I'm at here. Rick wins their dogs let her sleep. People saying hi to Rick Wynn. Joe. Danny's right. We're not going to win every battle, but it's a war. Our health and longevity and nutrition is really a war. I mean, every day is a battle, and I'm not going to win every day. 
And I have to be able to understand that to a degree. So not to feel so defeated that one battle doesn't turn into two, three, four, six months later, I'm, you know, up a hundred pounds and I'm not posting and I'm not making content and I'm just miserable and suffering. But luckily I don't have just myself. As I said before, I have all of you. I have Chandra. I have the kids. It may take them a little while longer to see what we're doing, but they're going to give me crap. If they come in and see me eat that stuff, they're going to be like, that's not keto. Ha ha ha. So, I mean, even though they're rusing me and joking and, and all that stuff, it's still going to get the point across to me. And Cindy, she would love run them. watermelon, cantaloupe, grapes. Grapes are delicious. Like, and then they started putting out these like cotton candy grapes. I'm like, I, I never tried one because I was afraid. I was actually afraid to try one of those because I used to love the really sweet, like green grapes and red grapes. Oh, grapes are so good. They're like little sugar bombs. I never really cared much for bananas. I would eat them on occasion, but they were never really my favorite. And really weirdly enough, like the bananas that we eat today are not like the bananas we even had like 50, 60 years ago. Even a hundred. Well, I think it was about a hundred years ago. They used to be like short and fat with big seeds in them. They, you know, now they're basically seedless and long and full of sugar and stuff. So it's weird how like in the course of a hundred years, something that didn't exist became such a huge part of what we eat and considered healthy. That was weird. I'm back. Sorry about that. Something happened weird with the connection. So let's get back to this. Cindy asked if Joe is going to KPL. So let's see if I can find the answer. So Joe, somehow her grandfather would go down to South Carolina and come back with watermelons, peaches, and all that. Let's see. Small slice, not the whole thing. Yeah, 100%. I miss the old apples. My grandma would buy me the uh, the honey crisp apples. Those were so good, but so sugary and sweet. Like your like you would just feel like you just drank a soda almost. So I don't know if uh, Rick would ever ask or answer the question if she's going or not. Washington apple. I just I like a nice crisp apple. I don't like the mushy ones. I love frozen burger patties. I buy them from Walmart and uh, I eat like four of those. They're so good. Just cook them up on the stove or the air fryer or GFS. If you have a GFS in your area, they have uh, these all beef hot dogs. The jumbo hot dogs are listed at one carb each. So even if you really don't believe it and you round it up to two carbs, that's still better than like what Costco has. And they're relatively clean for hot dogs. Um, and I'll throw those in the air fryer. Excuse me, 15 minutes, 400 degrees, make them all crispy like I just threw them on the grill without having to start the grill. So, yeah. So, Cindy's saying, with Brian being a type 1 diabetic and having, let's see, hypoglycemic episodes, if I eat carby foods, we do not go off plan. Exception is when at the fair, a planned funnel cake only after having some protein. Yeah, 
and I know there's a lot of people out there that have to be very careful. Um, and I know, I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse for me because I don't necessarily have to be so careful. I should, but I don't know what, like for me, like battling that addiction, like, I don't know. I kind of have to pick my battles and you know, all that fun stuff. Pre keto used to order three pizza hut family dinners for the four of us ate it. Oh, I mean, just real. I mean, for real. Like, we used to order and get a large pizza for everybody in the house. I mean, even to like my birthday this year, we went and ordered pizza, and we got two 20-inch pizzas for just the two of us. Should we have done it? No. But it was delicious. <laughs> I don't know. It's just such a hard thing. Dustin that plays in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Another Dustin. Uston's family, you know, Uston's Unite. Miss Bananas, Cotton Candy Grapes came out before I went keto. I never tried them. I wanted to, but I was afraid. I was legitimately afraid. I figured I would just eat them. And I think they were expensive, too. If I'm not mistaken, I think they were like 4 or $5 a pound, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what fruit costs. I don't know what things cost anymore. Like, I was shocked to see, like, what stuff at McDonald's costs. Like, a Big Mac meal is like $14 or something crazy like that. Like, what? No, it used to be like three bucks. And at 39 cents, get a bigger fry. You know? I don't see how you, like, it's not like, it used to be cheap and bad. Now it's expensive and bad. Like, I don't understand, like, how, how, you know, how is fast food becoming so expensive? Is it because they can? Because it's so entrenched that we're not going to go without it? Because fast food used to be cheap because it was, a treat it was something that we would get every once in a while or it was like the mom who was just tired and okay we're getting happy meals for dinner tonight it's friday whatever i don't i don't, I don't have time to cook tonight and i'm exhausted and now it's the staple like you know driving doordash i'm like pay, you know taking like I, I i i took two different blizzards to people last night that was weird like they just i mean i'm like i i've never i've never actually ordered through DoorDash. I've just delivered now. So, yeah. Cindy said, or Joe says she's not going to KPL. Uh, she has an eye appointment about that time. I'm trying to get my AMD to settle down. I don't know what AMD is. Oh, let's see. Yeah, we're, we're back. Yeah. So at least at Costco here, uh, like strip steaks and ribeye steaks are about like twelve to fifteen, twelve to fourteen dollars a pound. I haven't looked at skirt steak because I don't know much about it, but I definitely wouldn't buy a skirt steak if it's twenty five dollars a pound. Nope, I'm not spending that much money on anything. Oh, age related macular degeneration. Okay, okay. Yeah, I had no idea what that was. AMD to me is a processor. It's the processor I've got in my computer right now. <laughs> AMD Ryzen. Uh, so, yeah. Well, it's been about an hour and a half. We've had a lovely conversation. I'm so ecstatic that you all joined me today. I haven't even finished my coffee yet. I've been talking so much. <laughs> oh. Ribeye, yeah, ribeye, nine ninety nine a pound. I got some ribeye from Kroger the other day for seven ninety nine a pound, or was like bone in ribeye. Always a good deal. I like buying good deals, but I mean, we eat enough meat that we have to buy it not on sale too. That's the unfortunate thing. Hmm. Can we give it up? Can make sure to throw a like, uh, a thumbs up on this video for coffee, not for me, but for coffee. It's so delicious. Mm. But anyway, I'm going to end this now. I will see you all next week, 7.30 in the morning, if you are so inclined to join me. And we'll talk about all kinds of other weird, random stuff again. Okay? Thank you all so very much for being here. John, Cindy, Joe, Dustin. Matreya, all of you, Sharon, I know 
I'm not sure who was all still in the chat, but thank you all so much for joining me today. And I'll see you, I should say, we will see you, Shannon and I will see you Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and gets plenty of rest.